And um, as you know, and uh, a lot of you probably know a lot because you have gone into it and have studied the, the issue of choice. So what I'm going to say is probably some, some stuff you already knew, but it's something that, that is affecting us all in terms of our, uh, of our school districts. So I put this up just to um, kind of remind us what's happening through the years. But the first governor that instituted choice was Angler, Governor Angler. And after that, you know, things kept, kept happening. And in uh, 2011, our legislature again <coughs> moved to expand the choice by, uh, you know, it says uh, uh, the cap was removed for charter schools. So I, I, that's just the information for you. Uh, yes. So anyway, um, that's just as, as a refresher, you know, for us that how things have happened through the years. Um, so we, um, when that happened, of course, Lansing being the largest school district, started to lose kids because it was an opportunity for parents to look elsewhere. And what happened, we know that, that what we call the white flight, you know, from our from our uh, urban districts. It happened all over the place. Mm -hmm. And Lansing is just one of those that, that was here. So what that did was two things, or maybe more than two things, but it started to deteriorate, you know, um, in my view, uh, the, the issue of, uh, of school pride. You know, now you can go anywhere, so they don't have any pride of, of one school or the other because they can go anywhere. Um, so I think that, that, to me, that's one of the biggest losses we had because uh, I remember in high school, and you probably do as well, that, that your high school was your high school, right? Mm -hmm. And you had pride in it, and the colors, and the marching band, and the football, and all that. So I, that, that to me is one of the consequences of, of, of choice, that it destroyed that uh, hometown feeling. Even if Lansing had three high schools, or four high schools at one time, it was still a hometown school. And with the, the event of choice, well, our kids, had choice, but actually it was the parents who had choice. You know, really, you think about it. So the parents chose to move out or to move the kids to another school district, which they thought was going to be better for the kids. Uh, fast forward, not all kids that transferred to other schools did well. And certainly we have seen many of those kids come back to our district. And what was a problem with that was that every child takes X amount of dollars. And once they moved out of Lansing, well, Lansing lost those dollars. And, and so, but then when they came back, we still were required to, you know, give them the, the full services of the district. So that kind of uh, messed their budget up, you know, to that degree. Um, so, and anyway, you know, those are kinds of things that happen. And obviously the, the urban school district started to build new buildings like Holt and they built a new high school, but that was predicated on how many students they were gonna be able to, to get from the, the Lansing schools, and from the South Side, particularly. So they did, they built a very nice high school. And, uh, and still, uh, our kids still go there. For you, you can take it. Okay, it's a 24-page uh, report done by the Center of Public Education from the National School Boards of Education. And, and in this report, it measures a lot of different things, uh, including um, the voucher system, homeschooling, virtual schools, um, et cetera, et cetera, and how it impacts uh, public schools. Choice. Well, what they really found was that 84% of all public, uh, all students go to public schools, 84%. The rest go to charter, or other school districts. So the majority of our, of our children still attend public schools, okay? Uh, and the finding was that um, the, the um, going to a public school, I mean to a charter or a choice, did not have significant impact on their education, okay? And um, I don't wanna be, go into too much detail about that, but we have, uh, you have the report you can take home and read it. And this report was again looked at, this is a 2017 
report that was done and it was looked at again in last year in the 2018-2019 school year and things haven't changed. The percentage of students going to public schools still at the 80, 80 percent plus and the rest go to either charters or another another school district. So and the impact of, of their uh, um, uh, educational uh, progress is still the same. It, it's not significant and actually even though some charters, for example, in some cases do very well, and I read in the report that charters that deal with uh, project-based learning, like we're doing at Everett High School with a new tech high, do very well. And I can believe that because uh, the new tech high at Everett is doing very well. And students really like the, the, the techy feeling of it. And, and the projects they work with and, and, and the cooperation, the collaboration of students to achieve a goal. So I can believe that. And, uh, and like in public schools, not all schools do that as well. So charters, uh, by and large, still don't do as well as, as public schools overall, but some do, some do. And, and we have to give them credit. So I bring that to your attention so you can look at it and maybe get some more a feel of choice nationwide, okay? I don't know and, how to go from page to page. Well, it's okay, but because I've, I've gone through this a little bit, and I didn't want to go through whole, the whole document because it's, it's too long. Mm -hmm. But just to highlight the fact that after all this study, it comes out the same. The majority of students go to public schools, and the, the choice doesn't make a significant impact on, in general, on all students that leave uh, their, their public school. They go to another school. Now, let me see if I can go to the next point? document. Did you want the PowerPoint? Well, if we can have it. I, the, the last one actually is the one that's probably more impactful to us because you will see. Uh, I know you have some numbers, and we'll see how those, um, um, the Lopez presentation. That one? No, the little one. That one actually worked. Okay, that one. Okay. Okay. So, and, and if they were able to pick that up, it's, uh, I have a copy of that. There's uh, copies of that in the, in the table. So if you can go to the second, there. Okay. This is distribution of uh, school action of Lansing residents. 2018, 2019. As you can see, we have uh, 65 total school-age students. Of that, 10, 10 to attend the Lansing School District, and 6,331 attending other school district or charter. Okay. And then in the next slide, again we have the same numbers, but students attending. Other school districts, 3,900, almost 4,000 students. And students attending charter schools, 2,300. Okay? So that would be the breakdown of how choice right now is affecting the Lansing School District. And finally, the uh, PSAT scores, 2018 uh, 2019, you see students did not attend seventh grade in Lansing schools and took the test. Their score was 684. Attended seventh grade in Lansing schools at 701, the PSAT score. So that is a snapshot of our student population, where they go, charters or, or other districts, and a little bit of, uh, of how it impacts the impacts our, uh, our students' um, educational attainment. Yes, ma'am. Um, you, you said a moment ago about um, there wasn't a significant, a significant change for students who went to other districts. But I'm looking at PSAT scores that differ by 30 points. Right. I think most people would think that's significant. Oh, You're better staying in, in your public school. Well, no, what I said when they go to another school, to other schools. They don't change. When they change, let's say, from Lansing schools to other schools. Right. Or other charters. 
It doesn't. Well, th now this is Lansing, okay? Right. When I spoke, I spoke generally, nationally. Uh -huh. It doesn't impact, and you can see that that it, it, it impacts a bit in a negative way. That's what I meant. Yeah. That's what I meant. Right. Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's a significant thing to draw people's right. attention. And that's what, what we need to understand, and, and, and other parents and community needs to understand as well. Yes, ma'am. Did you have a question? My question is, in your numbers here, of total school age students, uh, where do you include homeschoolers in that number, or are they not included? They're total, total school. What, what you do is you get all the the children in Lansing, in the Lansing School District. Okay. And that's a 16, okay. uh, whatever number I said, 16,000 plus. Yeah, that would be the total number of students in the district. Of those, 10,000 plus come to Lansing schools, and the others go to charters or other districts, including virtual schools, homeschooling, and other. Okay? I think that's one thing we, we didn't break down, but maybe we should, because out of the charter schools, I would imagine, is where you have the breakdown on, on kids going to virtual, uh, you know, doing virtual school or homeschooling. Well, the homeschool number is hard to determine. I'm sorry? The homeschool number of children, I'm wondering how you even know that number. Well, and that's what I said, we didn't look at it, and I don't know if we can really have a number, but I think it's something we should look at. Because in Michigan, there's no requirement for a home school to register. The only reason they register if they need special education services. Otherwise, we really don't ever have a good number on how many homeschoolers there are. Um, if they're taking advantage of um, some of like art and music classes and those, um, we get a little number that way. But it's really an unknown number. Right. Right. So, um, how to come up with a hard number is, is probably uh, would be difficult. Um, for what she said, but but we still do accept some of the homeschoolers, like in art classes or or sports. I think there's a way that they can participate in their local schools, being homeschooled. So and, and we don't have a number. I don't have a number. I, I should have asked, but I don't. Special ed. Well, I, I would say I don't. I don't think that a parent would. No, I, I shouldn't say that either. <laughs> so I get in trouble. Uh, Special ed child needs so much help, and, and a different kind of help that not all parents are, are equipped to do that. Uh, but sometimes maybe it's the best thing they can do. For Actually, their child. we're finding in the online, and we're looking at online education, uh, between 12 and 15 percent of those kids are special needs kids. Right. right. And, and it depends on what special need they have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the financing. Am I correct that Michigan still has the one day um, count or is it two? Two. It's two. Okay. In, two. I know that in other states it's done differently. In California, it's every day they count. So, so this ninety percent of the money goes out on the September count date. Thank so you. a student who transfers who starts in Holt and decides by the 1st of October that that's not the place for them and comes back to Lansing, tough luck Lansing, it's only 10% that will come from the so February count. So there are just count. two days where the count is done. But 90% of the money goes I would like on the to first. ask a question. How does the school district have any numbers about how much they're losing because students come back to the, obviously a student who lives in the school district has a right to go to the school. It, it, does the Lansing School District have numbers about how much money is lost because students start out someplace else and then come back to Lansing? Well, there was a, a slight change in, in the state. I understand that if a student goes to another district and then comes back, there is an opportunity to recoup some of that money, but not all, okay? So let's say, uh, our um, per student per people um, grant is let's say $8,000 okay so if a student from Lansing goes to another school district they take $8,000 with them okay if they choose to come back for whatever reason I've been told that there's a way to work with the districts and now they're required to some degree 
to then, you know, uh, allocate some sort of money back to the district. Um, I don't know, I don't have all the details on that because that just came up in one of our meetings. But, but we're still losing. But, you, the, the but we don't, the district doesn't know yet how much we're still losing. Well, well, well given it's it's over a period. Uh, the mobility, well, sure, no, the sure, mobility sure. rates are calculated, yeah, so right. you know how many kids are coming back. I mean, because they, they go into the statewide system, so you would be able to see kids who are moving and know exactly how many are coming back. That number is available. Yeah, but the number of, of dollars is available then? Multiply it by 8,000 um, yeah, or some portion say. of 8,000 mm -hmm. and, and you get it. 3,000 3, kids from our school district plus are going to other districts. So you multiply that by $1,000, then you... 200, almost, two, almost a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, more, than, more than that. More than more that. that. I think it's two million or... Yeah, or she has two 20, million something. 20, yeah. yeah. It's, it's lots of money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's more than two million dollars. Oh, more than that. More, more. Uh, and then charters. Um, and, and you know, the problem with charters is that they don't take all students. Right. Uh, and students with uh, special needs, uh, not all charters are able to to serve them, so they don't take them. They also don't do high school. Right, and high school. So one of the things that I told our superintendent is that we should work with charters. I mean, they're here, I and mean, we can't and then we can't make parents send their kids whether they don't want to send them. But we can work with charter schools to ensure that their kids have an opportunity to come to our district once they're done with a uh, K K eight education in charters, which most aren't. And this way, you know, that, that we have that uh, working relationship with them. Because, um, you know, as, as much as, as we would like for all kids to be back, well, parents have made a decision. And it's their right to make that decision. So, but we have to do the best we can with the kids we have. And, and start to do more, more with them and, and for them. And, and even though, obviously, we have always tried to do our best and have had the uh, there are many successes out of Lansing in our school system. We have kids going through all colleges and universities, community colleges in this nation. And some have, you know, I know a, a homeless child who was at the Y and then a couple took him in. He ended up getting the, the um, uh, what is this, a Microsoft guy? What's his name? Gates. Yeah. He got a full right over $100,000 for his education. So, I mean, we have very smart kids in the district. Um, I also brought for you um, a little promo here for our school district, and it talks about the pathway to promise that we're implementing nowadays. Yes, ma'am. I had a question about this. Are you going to talk about these numbers? Uh, okay, chart? I didn't put them together, but maybe you know. But what is the number, ma'am? I'm wondering, um, is this saying that a thousand Lansing kids are in the Holt public school? Yes. Yes. Is there a reason why Holt is so popular? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, it's very it's close to the Lansing School District. And, and, they, and the first year, they, they publicized like mad that they were open to choice. And that first year, they, and they worked the southwest corner of the city like mad. And, and they got them. And, and then they built a high school that was too big for the district uh, because they could pass a bond to build a school in ways that, and then that's been a big, and that's, we've seen that around lots of other urban areas, building very large schools to accommodate an influx of new students. So they have great big school, plenty of class A uh, sports and band and all, lots of things. They, however, do not provide transportation. Right. You gotta drive them there. Yes, ma'am. So I'm not sure what the other number is then, the 97. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Nine. Yeah, 97 children from Hull come to Lansing. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the whole issue, um, they send out CDs to all the homes with, with uh, whatever. Now, the other issue is that Michigan has been losing population overall. The suburbs have been losing population overall. 
So one of their strategies was to obviously open up for choice. Otherwise, some of them wouldn't even think about it. You know? But it was the financial burden that you know, they have these big schools they built, now they don't have students to, for those buildings, so now there's choice, voila, you know, uh, we get Lansing kids. And you know, forever they have been recruiting athletes from Lansing too, but that's another story. Uh, but you know, that, that is the kind of thing that, the choice, uh, the um, negative impact it's had on the Lansing School District. Now, um, we have, as a board, uh, working very closely with our superintendent, and now uh, Ivan, who left, we started to work uh, kind of outside the box kind of thing and develop this uh, pathway to promise. Yes, ma'am, you had another question? No, I was just saying your mic is off. Is it off? No, it's not off. Can you hear it? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I think it's got probably a short writing email. Anyway, um, that in a nutshell is, is what we're looking at in terms of choice and its impact on the district. Uh, I didn't want to burden you with a lot of other you know, numbers because you know, data, I found out, is only as good as, as how you understand it and, and the twist you give it. So sometimes data is, is misleading and we have to ensure that the data really tells us what we want to know. For example, you know, we're talking about um, other other schools besides charters and, and districts. Uh, we have homeschooled and virtual, so we need to understand that too, to the extent that we can get that information. Um, Money-wise, the way we're, we're funded by the state, um, well, Proposal A, you know, it was good and bad. Um, the districts that always had money still have money. The Okamas, the Waverleys, the, the folks with the, with the high, pro, uh, high property values still have money because it was embedded in, in the uh, proposal A that they would get that money so they wouldn't suffer. Uh, the rest of the, the, the districts who were not that high level of funding, uh, we were okay. Lansing is now getting to the level of funding we were in nine, in uh, 10 years ago, before the recession. We were at, at about 8,000 plus. We're now getting to the 8,000 with what the governor approved uh, in, the, in the new budget. You mean so, Lansing in particular or all the schools? Well, Lansing in particular, you know, we, uh, we're feeding our, our suburbs with students, but still they get more per student than we do. Okay, so that's the, not a disconnect, but what was um, part of the proposal A. Yes, ma'am. Um, oh. no, I'm almost. Go ahead. I'm not sure if I want to name the school district, but a uh, parent told me that in their school district, one of every five children in their classrooms was a school of choice student. One of every five in every classroom. We were averaging was a school of choice. It's one, it's one in four statewide. One in four, uh, one in four children are attending a school district other than their resident school district. So that could include the charters, that can include the virtuals, that can include choice. So one in four kids statewide is no longer attending the school down the street. Yeah. Yes, sir. A question of um, charter schools. Do they have to be K through 12 or are they some elementary, middle school, high school? Are they different? Generally, they're K-8. Uh, I, I haven't, uh, high schools, I've this Martin Luther King High School, but mostly um, religious-based high schools, like Martin Catholic Luther. Central, we Martin Luther. We found it was Luther. Martin Luther. Yeah, Martin Luther, the new high school that opened just this year, <laughs> across from, from Eastern High School. Um, so there's the competition in that way. I don't know what they do. I don't know if it's a, a virtual school or, or, or how it works, it operates. There's not much on it. But don't the religious schools, they don't get the state money or do they? No. They no, but they have, they, they're talking about vouchers, which would a student would take a voucher to a Catholic school or whatever religious school there was and they can use that. 
There's a fight going on. It may or may not pass, but there's the discussion. But if, for example, they hire a Spanish teacher from the Lansing <coughs> School District to teach two classes in Spanish, then they would get state aid for that for that area. And there are a couple of the Catholic schools that are hiring a Lansing certified teacher to do that. Contracting with the district. It's a Lansing School District teacher that yeah. provides two two hours or whatever of class time in a, um, let's say, Catholic central. Yes, ma'am, you had a question? And they sometimes purchase um, special ed services, too. Oh, that's true. Because, and I don't know if they go through the intermediate, because they're the ones that, that have the special ed funding for, a, for the area. If you're a private school, <clears throat> you can get services. The children can get special ed services, but you can't get like your core instruction. Right. And that's paid for. You know, that's in the federal law. You can get services, and you get federal dollars um, for those services. But not the core subjects. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't know who who if anyone can answer my question, but I'm mulling on the issue of finance and how you're losing these dollars as they go elsewhere. And you mentioned that um, it's taken all this time for Lansing to recover, um, to get back to the level of funding that it had in 2008, which I assume means that it's actually behind if you count inflation in. Um, but somewhere I read that the growth of education spending in Michigan was not dead last in the United States, but approaching dead last in the United States. Yes. Would, so would somebody comment on that? And, and is this, has this happened um, at the same time as the growth of charters? Yeah. And yeah, would someone want to comment on that? Let, let, let me tell you uh, the little I know, is that because of the downturn in the economy, the governor took money out of the <coughs> state aid fund to cover general uh, purposes. So then the schools were, were uh, uh, you know, at, at a deficit. So instead of getting the 8,000, we got 6,005, thereabouts, okay? So that, but that was statewide. And, uh, but again, you know, the, the district with the high values still got more. So it doesn't matter, you know, how much. So yeah, you're right, and it, and I think it was about uh, even before that when Angler talked about choice, and then the charter schools came into play. Um, that uh, yeah, it was not a, at the same time necessarily. I I think, it, but it was kind of following that, and uh, but, but the governor this year uh, added more money because she understands that that we are. If not at the bottom, very low in the spending in education. The other thing that happened is that uh, Snyder took a lot of the um, um, power or whatever you want to call it from the Department of Education and put it in his in his office and under Treasury. So that also had an impact on on the school districts because now we're we're responding to to two entities in state. And uh, it kind of puts us in a in a bind, you know, because we have to uh, not comply, but you know, um, follow dictates or orders from from the state in education. That was uh, not confusing, but uh, not not the best that could have happened. If you want the the last forum that the committee sponsored was actually on this topic, so if you want to see those slides, just let me know and I'll send you the slides. Because the David Arson's report and the um, other speakers did a very nice job that night. And we have all the slides and the data from that. Yes. Uh, like Ju Judy had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. It just feels like we're working on making things more unequal. Is what it feels right. like. Yeah. Right. Did you say Lansing School District gets less foundation grant per pupil than other districts do? Than some other districts. Yes. Than, than than the Okamas, than the uh, Waverly. Because um, some of the property values go into, they started out much higher. Than right. The, 
So when the proposal lay, and this is maybe in the finance, you have some of that information, but proposal lay ensured that the districts like the Okemos, for example, would stay at a higher level than, oh, right. than districts yeah. Yeah. with a lower property value base. But they, I guess the, the thought then was that they were going to make everybody equal at some point in time, but I guess it never happened. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, what, what is Lansing doing to attract and keep students in the school district? Well, um, our latest uh, uh, numbers show that we have uh, about 200 uh, more students than expected. And I think that has, has happened because, one, the promise in Lansing, that the promise scholarship. Uh, can you is, talk about that? Uh, yeah, I can. You know, the promise was uh, Governor Renholm oh. put together 10 <coughs> areas in the state that called promise zones, and Lansing was one of them. So the school district, the school boards, like we did, we appointed a promise board. And they have been working, but unlike Kalamazoo, which had the promise and it was funded entirely from the get-go by, by the found, you know, foundations over there, uh, we had to work on it. And our board has been working since then to fundraise and to get uh, some uh, tax money and uh, as specified in, 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 in the law. So it's taken us years to do that, but now we're at a point where, and, and I'm on the promise board, by the way. So now we're at the point where, where we're fundraising. You know, Magic Johnson did a great job a few years ago and brought a lot of people and brought some, some donors as well. But that was a one time, you know, and we still continue to work and continue, we hired finally a director, which is Justin Sheehan, and he has been doing fantastic, touching base, keeping the, the, the uh, uh, our, our funders, you know, close to us. And, and our board has expanded to include some of them so that, uh, so that they know what they're putting their money in. And obviously it's education. They want kids that are, that are um, job ready, college ready, when they graduate from high school. And, and those are the things that, uh, that we're working on. And finally, because, you know, things happen, uh, the Promise Board didn't have a very close relationship with the district to begin with, but now it's very, very good. You know, we work head in hand, and, uh, and we're, uh, now we're getting also some, some tax, uh, there's a term on it, but it's tax money in, in that law. Uh, this year we got $350,000, and it'll go up as the years go. So we still need to fundraise because I think we need at least uh, $5 million a year. And, and our goal is to, to get those $5 million a year for a certain times where we can have um, a fund that can then take care of itself, an endowment. So we're working very hard on that. Uh, our promised dinner is April. It's gonna be again at Eastern High School. Uh, actually, not at Sioux High School, but at, at uh, Don Johnson Fieldhouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very nice last year. They really did a good job of preparing the, the Fieldhouse, which is a, a gym, you know, for, for this thing. I don't know if any of you went, but I would encourage you that when you see this uh, announcement that, that you would uh, uh, try to come. It's, it's a very good experience. Uh, and that promise, you know, again, uh, right now we're paying basically two years of LCC or whatever that buys at Michigan State, or, and then we have, uh, with all of that, whatever we have, they'll, they'll take, and then they'll add more money to almost get a kid, you know, a full ride at all of that. And then we're, we're open to other uh, colleges and universities, but we're working slowly, you know? And because this, this, this promise board if you go to other state promises, uh, we're, we're way ahead on the curve, and so we're doing very well. Uh, Kelly Dean, who is the chair, is, you know, he's very committed to community, and um, even before he had his uh, <laughs> bus system in our district, okay? Uh, even before that, he was always uh, very helpful. So uh, it's working well, and uh, if you can support it, we would appreciate it, okay? Any other question? 
How yes. about the magnet schools? Can you tell us about how you attract kids to different schools in the district? Well, what we have, because we have some magnet money for some of the schools, like uh, for, for our uh, visual and performing arts at uh, Dwight Ridge, which was at uh, Pleasant View. But, but now they're part of the pathway, okay? And, and those are feeders to our, to our high schools. So a child can, uh, and the parent, you know, can choose a pathway for their child and go through the district, uh, obviously getting their, their core subjects and what have you, but with a pathway, whether it's uh, visual performing arts or it's um, uh, uh, the STEM yeah. or STEAM, and, um, and, and all is traditional high schools, but with, with the theme as a, as a pathway. So I encourage you to take this pamphlet. It gives you uh, um, the information about how the pathway works mm -hmm. and, and how it, um, it is expanding. And I think that is really uh, attracting parents you know, back to the district. Mm -hmm. And my view is that, okay, so parents or some students are gone. That's okay. We just need to attract new parents and do as best as we can with the, with the kids we have. Because, you know, and, and obviously Lansing is the largest district and we have a diversity of kids from refugees to, you know, um, folks that, that come to the district. And as much as we have the diversity, we also sometimes we have challenges. And, but I think that makes us stronger. And I think that uh, that is one of the attractions of, of the district. And I think we're with this program, with this kind of pathway to promise, and we say pathway to promise because it's promise scholarship at the end of the, of the day. And uh, we're doing better, and I think parents and folks that come into a district, they say, well, we didn't know, because they don't take time to really uh, either go into a website or ask parents that are, have their kids in the district uh, about the district itself. Yes, ma'am. Do we have data about the age profile where children are moving out of the district? It was usually after elementary school. Yeah, and, and but some parents started from, from the get-go in charters mm -hmm. because they were available. Now in Lansing, uh, two charters have closed, the Chabas mm -hmm. and I think Mid-Michigan Academy. But we have, uh, uh, the newest one was Lansing Charter School on Holmes and uh, next to the post office. And there's Windermere. And I think there's a, another one that I'm not thinking of, Kalamazoo. Colt. Colt. Colt, yeah. Colt. Colt, yeah. Colt Charter. So um, that is what we have in Lansing proper. <coughs> but then there's the other virtual schools and the homeschooling and what have you. But um, any other question? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Go, go you. <laughs> Two things. One, if you um, are motivated that we league members would support the um, scholarship foundation. I'm losing the words. What did you call The promise. promise. Yes. You see, if you join the uh, fundraising group, we can discuss that and make plans to do that. <laughs> yeah. We'd be glad to I do like that. You. Put your name on the list. Okay. My other question is, um, having worked in the Lansing area, um, students who have dropped out for various reasons, uh, especially middle school and high schoolers, and uh, young women who are pregnant, the schools have, I'm not sure what they currently have, but it seemed to me at the time that the Lansing schools could do a better job of scooping those people up and keeping them in school by offering some programs. And what currently are you doing about that population to keep those students in school? The, uh, for uh, young ladies who were pregnant, uh, we have programs. And, so and there is a option for them to be in a classroom setting. Right, right. So there are options, and um, no, I know we had, about, uh, I'm sorry? Talk, talk about Wood Creek. Wood Creek, now Wood Creek is uh, it's a different thing because it was a place where we would 
you know, send kids who are dropping out or dropped out or come back. Now Wood Creek is really a, a, a Montessori. Wood Creek, we expanded Montessori uh, to Wood Creek because uh, it's at the upper level now. And it's um, um, a step up, not a step up, but just so, so we could uh, offer that for kids in the upper grades of uh, Montessori. So the program we had at, at uh, Wood Creek is basically now in the, in the schools themselves. So we have um, uh, online um, uh, study that could bring them up and, and, not, and not fail. We also have the Welcome Center where we offer GED or high school completion for students who have dropped out and want to come back. So that's, that's really another interesting place because we have many refugees that come in uh, to learn the language, to get their GED. We have kids that have dropped out of school, want to complete the GED or high school completion, and they can. And they can actually graduate with, with their class as well, if, if, they, if they're still in time to come back. So, so we have those services. And sometimes, you know, we, um, if it's a particular kind of situation, we'll work with it. And so a, a parent or a guardian or student who is uh, old enough can ask. And, 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 and we can work with that. There's really no yes and then you. Well, Pat Quinn and I did voter registration at Eastern High School. Okay. And we were so impressed with the high school. If you haven't gone there, I urge you to go and visit it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. That, and that was a middle school. Pat and yeah. Previously, right. Yeah, previously. And then, and then Fairview is now the new Pentagon. And if you haven't visited, please go because it is also very Amazing. impressive. And, and, and you see kids with their little white coats and because they do a lot of uh, lab work. <laughs> it's, it's a STEM, it's a STEM uh, program. So you should uh, over there and then you. Yes, ma'am. A little off the subject, but teacher retention in the Lansing district, does it differ significantly from? Do you have a problem with teacher retention? Do you lose teachers to... Yeah, well, we lose teachers in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not any different than other districts. Okay. Because we, we do have a, a teacher charge. And um, what that does is if, they, if it's a uh, teacher that comes to Lansing, and then for whatever reason, young teachers are very mobile. Okay, so and if there's a couple and one finds a job elsewhere, you know, they, they move with them. Others, you know, some are, have difficulty with the classroom, and some are just not cutting it. So, so we have the gamut, you know, but, but I think in, the, in overall, I think, you know, we have, it's a statewide and probably a national issue that uh, teachers, teacher retention and, and shortage are, are kind of hand in hand, you know, we, we can retain, but we have a shortage anyway, so it's a difficult situation. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm good. It was similar to your question. Oh, okay. okay. Do, do you still have Chinese immersion? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. We have a Chinese immersion at the... Uh, uh, what part? Oh, no. Post Oak. Post Oak. There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> at Post Oak. And uh, it goes through Eastern, right? Right. And then we have Spanish immersion at Luton. Oh, cool. And then we're trying to work it up. So, so those two programs are, are in place, and I think they're doing pretty good, actually. And uh, the Chinese immersion has been very good for a long time. That's where the mayor's kids' children are. <coughs> well, Andy Shore's children are in that program. Well, they're also at, at um, Everett High School. Yeah. Uh, Andy Shore, uh, thank goodness. And, and when he was uh, a county commissioner, he would call me and say, hey, you know, there's this thing going on. Okay, well, let me see what we can do. And we had a really good conversation. We had a, a connection. And so he has always supported the schools, and he's got his kids in the schools. And actually, actually one of his kids in, in, at Everett is, well, he's younger than my grandson who graduates this year. Uh, but he goes to New Tech High. And, and he's really, he sings the praises because he knows. And, and, and you know, any child who has a, um, a parent who is involved or at least 
cares uh, a bit or a lot is going to be successful. And that's what happens, you know, by and large. We have some, we have all kinds of parents and we have some very young parents as well in the district. So we have the gamut, you know, we have to, to work with all of them. And, and no child is any different than the other one. It's just we have to continue to work with them and, and make it a place where they want to stay and learn. So, um, but again, you know, Andy has been very good for the district. He, he supports us. He sends his kids there. And his wife is in the Intermediate School District Board in the ISD. So they're, they're all about education. You had a question so now? So one last question. It gets <coughs> so both the Lansing and East Lansing districts within the last five years have committed themselves through bonding for infrastructure and to see the Lansing District flip Patton Hill over and come Eastern High shows a fair amount of flexibility in attitude and, and behavior. These new structures that we have, what about them is going to help sustain the programs for the for the foreseeable future anyway? Well, one thing is that we're very um, appreciative of our of our uh, residents who approved way back a $69 million bond which built um, Pattengale School and, and other improvements. Fast forward, also approved a $120 million bond which we're working with now, which not only flipped uh, 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 Pattengale into Eastern, but also allowed us to to do other things like with uh, uh, with um, Dwight Bridge, with every high school is going to see some some improvement, especially with the technology area. You know, infrastructure for technology, labs, and and obviously we built a new Eastern High School field, football field, and and uh, uh, you know that it all attracts people. Some are really into sports and they want to see their kid play and. So that's that's an attraction, and, and it's very nice, by the way. So every every high school, every school in the district will get um, improvements. If if it's furniture only, they'll get uh, new furniture for all the kids, uh, and also the uh, um, the uh, security systems. Uh, and again, thanks again to our voters who approved uh, a sinking fund. That is, that's really going to be dedicated more to uh, our security improvements in our all our buildings and, and other um, infrastructure. Because we cannot use sinking fund money for, for salaries or things like that. It's got to be brick and mortar or something to that effect. So that's going to help us, in, in your question, to improve our buildings so that people feel secure, that we have better furniture, uh, better spaces for their children. So... Um, and that all contributes to learning, and that's what we're we're talking about. So, if, if anyone who wants to stay very fast, Elaine, uh, solar. Are, are you getting solar uh, on any of the schools? I'm sorry. Solar, solar panels. Solar panels. On the, solar on panels. Uh, to make it a neat school. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm getting better windows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a start. It's a start. Thank you very yeah. much, Claire. Make sure you pick up the pathways and the